Okay, we're back. We're live. We're at Think Tech Talks here on a given Wednesday. And you know what Wednesday is. Energy. It's energy Day. day. <laughs> <laughs> this is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. You bet it is. Okay, Always. <laughs> that's my cabinet. Say hi, Mike. Hi, folks. <laughs> He's co-chair of the uh, Energy Policy Forum. And that's Sharon Moriwaki. She's the other co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy right. Forum. So, which Aloha. is more co than co. Co-co, co-co. <laughs> I just work for Sharon. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, today we're going to talk about uh, Energy Day 2014, which took place on July 22nd uh, at Laniakea. It was a ridiculous uh, number of attendees showed up. It was uh, almost a quarter think. million. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't count them. <laughs> it was 240 or 50 people showed That's up right, to hear about ever. energy. Yeah. And uh, Sharon was uh, behind it. I mean, she set up some incredible panels. And um, it was really a joy to watch this. And we're going to talk about exactly what happened, what we learned, what the inner meeting, meaning of <laughs> Energy Day was. It was really amazing. Uh, it was turning point stuff. Turning point uh, okay. stuff. But first, we're going to talk about the uh, Negawatt moment um, because uh, Ian Tierney is here from Hawaii Energy and you're going to talk about art today. You've got to figure how energy gets to be art. Okay? So tell us, Ian. Yeah, so Hawaii Energy, if you don't know, is the ratepayer funded energy conservation. Is that switch on on the microphone? I want to be sure you're on. It should be toward and, you. Um, toward you. And so we uh, we're serving all the islands of um, Hawaii, Lanai, Maui, Molokai, and Oahu. And uh, so what we did was we helped um, basically a, a energy efficiency project come to fruition at the Honolulu Museum of Art. They had a, a number of old lamps that were in there and uh, through our rebates and incentives they were able to knock the uh, knock the simple payback of the project down to something that looks a little reasonable. So they replaced a lot of their old uh, incandescent, halogen, compact fluorescent lights with more energy efficient fluorescent and uh, LEDs as well. Did you have to be careful about lights that might damage the art? Well, the LEDs are actually the one light that doesn't damage the art. Um, previously, they had to cycle the art in and out uh, because the existing lighting was damaging the art. Oh, how mm. interesting. Yeah, hmm. so LEDs do not emit any UV radiation, and that's why they were selected for this project. This sounds like a, something that's unprecedented. I mean, have you done this for other similar institutions around the state, uh, or is this a kind of breaking new ground for Hawaii Energy? Uh, we, we've done it for a lot of art galleries. Um, they seem to really enjoy the lighting, but being that uh, the Museum of Art is a nonprofit, um, they had to come up with a creative funding resource. And, um, and so, actually, previously, their project in 2012, we helped them um, replace their uh, air conditioning, which was the worst performing uh, piece of equipment in their facility. And we gave them a $346,000 check for, for doing that project. And so the lighting was kind of the next Mm -hmm. um, one down there, but you know they had to get funding for it first, and uh, and so that takes some time. You can't just do everything all at once. You, you kind of have to do it in progression. So on the on the lighting change at the museum, how much did it cost? What was the rebate? I hope you have this. Uh, what what was the savings over time? Yeah. So I think the most important thing is the savings over time. Uh, it's is that way you're is that the way you're telling me that you don't have the other ones? So I think you have to look at it as, um, so yeah, you can look at the cost first. Okay. The cost is the scary number, right? I mean, the cost is the one thing you don't want to see. It's $314,000. Okay? okay. That's a lot of money, right? But the you're rebate? saving $113,000 a year. So that's a three-year payback approximately. Yeah. And then the rebate was $91,000. Okay. So you're cutting it down to a little over a two-year simple payback, which... Um, uh, we like to think of as a no-brainer project. Sounds like it. How it much are they paying good. now? How much are they paying now that they're saving? Well, that's the interesting um, thing. It, you know, roughly, you can't really see it in the energy bills because it's very dependent on what the customer does. So if I was to look at their energy bills before and after, uh, it's kind of a weird comparison. Maybe they have an event that, uh, that they didn't have last year at this time, and it increased their energy bills. So right now, uh, it's really just dependent on 
the behavior and not so much uh, just on the lights themselves. What's your next project actually, Ian? Well, I work with mainly offices, schools, and nonprofits. So my next project is going to be with uh, We Efficiency. They're doing a project mm -hmm. with um, yes. the uh, Hawaii Public Radio. Um, we're also going to be working with the YWCA to do a, a lighting retrofit there. And uh, the uh, Father Damien uh, School as well. Mm. We ought to get a think yes, tank yeah. on that list. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. We could do a lighting project you could. here. Could yeah. do a lighting project here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Except we already have LEDs. So. Should have waited. Know. What can you do better than LEDs? <laughs> we should have talked to you before. Anyway, that's uh, the attorney of uh, Hawaii, uh, Hawaii Energy. Energy. And behind him uh, in our studio gallery is sitting Rob DiVertiterra. Hi, Rob. Uh, and I uh, uh, hope you guys uh, come back next week because next week we're going to have a camera so you're not sitting in the dark and we can see the expression on your face as you make these statements and we can evaluate your credibility and everything. Real nervous next week. Great. Thanks, Jay. We okay. look forward to being here. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Rob. Thanks. And we also have in our studio audience today a, a carryover from <laughs> the last show, which was catching up in Kaka'ako, namely uh, Henry Curtis from Life of the Land. Say hi. Aloha, Jay. Okay, so, uh, you know, maybe we'll hear from Henry about some of the things that we discussed today. Very good. Anyway, thank you, Hawaii Energy. Appreciate it. Moving on to the principal subject, which is Energy Day 2014. Uh, it's perfect that you, the co-chairs of uh, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, are here because you organized this program and we can talk about it uh, retrospectively and, and see what it meant, you know, in the landscape and in the continuum of clean energy development in the state. Uh, so I guess I, let, me, let me just take a moment and say, aside from the 240 people who showed <laughs> up, uh, we had 30 speakers. That's like an all-time record. That's like, you know, putting a three-day program <laughs> into yeah, one. Yeah. It was. Uh, it, it was. was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> and, and the other thing, you know, you guys have to be complimented on this because um, you know, these, these programs are often, you know, just, just linear, where you tell a speaker, talk what you want about, uh, talk about, uh, or, you know, here, here's your little subject and cover that. But no, this was more structured. And they all knew, you know, not only what they were going to talk about, but what the guy next to them was going to talk about. And uh, you somehow motivated them into a really incisive discussion, a thoughtful discussion, a discussion that covered new ground. It was not, nobody could ever say this was the same old. So somehow you got those 30 speakers to really tell it like it is. That's extraordinary to me. Um, so what we had here was, um, you know, um, uh, something unprecedented. And we, we actually identified some tipping points in, in the process that leads to it. So congratulations, actually. It was a lovely show. Well, and you were a great MC oh, as just, usual. That moved the program along. I just do what they tell me, that's all. <laughs> but I think Sharon, Sharon kind of set the stage by saying, we really want to think about where we go from here. We've been talking about a lot of this stuff for a long time, and we really need to, to kind of push the people that have been involved to say, well, you know, what are the next steps, and, and, and to get the, both the speakers as well as the audience to say, well, you know, what comes first or what's the highest priority? And I think that really came off. The thing that amazed me most was that people stayed on time. <laughs> and, and they were things were crisp, and and as you said, Jay, they they really did follow one another. So there wasn't a lot of overlap, and the fact that they knew they had each other's presentations in advance really gave them a chance to kind of sort stuff out and decide in their own heads how they how it all fit together. I mean, I, at Sharon, the credit goes to Sharon oh. for, as the Everybody, architect of yeah. this thing. Well, know. I think that was one big element. You know, the the the, the high. Um, structure, the high, high, high preparation for this, not only by them, but by us collectively, the Energy Policy Forum, make this happen. But the, the other thing was, if I may, and I, we can talk about this in greater detail later, was the live sift. Yes. Uh, Henry Curtis and I were talking about this in the context of Kaka'ako not too long ago. And live sift is an element, I think, that helps you get to candor. It helps you get to having thoughts you never had before. And engaging the audience. And engaging the audience, yeah. yes. So that right. there, there was a different dynamic. It becomes a community of people instead of just speaker versus audience. You know, and that was different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, don't you agree? I mean, this was a different, a, a different environment. And a different dynamic because yeah, dynamic, the questions yeah. were coming, and they also we also had issues identified ahead of time. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and maybe you could explain the origins of the live shift and how we got hooked up with them. Well, it was after the Jay. Away. Well, we have been using because live shift all year it for in our Kaka programs. Yeah. And so we said, hey, you know, that would really work with the energy policy, um, Hawaii Clean Energy Day, because we have stakeholders from all over and it's diverse. That would be a great way. It's almost like a survey instantaneously, which it is. Um, and, and we said, well, how could we best use that technology so that we could engage more people? Because most of their complaints in the past years has been, you know, there's too much talking at us, not enough engagement, we don't have time for questions. And this enabled not only questions, uh, but also engagement in terms of actions and next steps, which is really where we want to go at, each, at the end of each uh, session. Yeah. And, and enabled that by having thought through action points first right. and then you know adding to it through the sessions but also being able to see right before your eyes you know which which priorities just come up I mean you think oh gee this is really high priority and all of a sudden you see more people coming on board and you, you, you see that uh, I think we in total had about 153 people because you have to have your iPad or your iPhone and not all of them came to the Well, office. actually, they're expanding that, you know. Oh, really? We, we met with them after the uh, David Lasner program last week, and uh, they're expanding to include, um, you know, questions that are handed in on paper. Oh, okay. There'll be a way to input those. Oh, good. So that good. even if you don't have a phone with you or a laptop, uh, you can still submit questions. Because it was frustrating for those who didn't, although we yeah. had a couple of iPads there for people to use, but yeah. you know, it was just too yeah. too much to get. Let me keep, let me, let's digress for a minute on LiveSift. LiveSift uh, is Alex Burgo. Uh, he's a PhD at, um, I forget what it is, maybe business school or something, computer, business maybe school. computer I think, science. You know, I think it's business uh, school. Uh, yeah. Business school. And um, right. he and a couple other guys uh, have put this together, and we discovered them sitting in that chair, Mike. Alex Berger mm. has been in that chair oh, really? a number of times, uh -huh. yeah. And um, so we took it a little further and uh, starting, I think, in, well, with our luncheon series this year, we mm. sort of committed to him and he to us. And each program we've had, we've included him, and it's gotten better in each one. So I was happy to see you use it in the, uh, in the Energy Policy uh, Forum program. So <clears throat> the, the thing about it is that you get these instant questions, uh, which are selected by the, the person who, the moderator or the person who vets the question, which is what you and Carl Freeman yeah, did. Yes. That, did which, you know, it's really important that somebody look at that. And, and since actually the program he did on Clean Energy Day, he has, he has made it more powerful. He's, made, he's always making changes. Mm. So this is really going somewhere. And there are two kinds of, like, I would say, voting type questions that where the audience can speak. Uh, one of them is the, um, what is it? It's the, oh, the percentage of votes for items on a list of up to six elements. So if you give them a list of six elements, people can vote, and then it shows in a pie chart how many votes for each mm -hmm. one of the elements. Right. Okay. That's voting on a m multiple choice list. The other one is actually more interesting to me. It's a ranking. The ranking. Mm -hmm. you give them the same six elements and you ask people to rank the ones that appeal to them mm -hmm. or, you mm -hmm. know, in, the, in order so of importance. So you've got the priorities right there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and, and uh, Henry and I were talking about this. Well, what is that exactly? It's voting. It is voting, It's yeah. a straw vote. So Q&A, that's nice. Immediate Q&A mm -hmm. is really nice. But voting, when you know what's in the mind of this, this organism in front of you mm -hmm. that sits there 240 strong, where you can make a pretty good estimate about what they are thinking, now that's something. You know, when... When Obama, President Obama was first elected, first term, he wrote a piece, and I was traveling, and I read this piece in such great detail, about the future of voting. And he talked about the fact that it would be a convergence with, net, with internet mm -hmm. and networking. And so someday soon, you know, we wouldn't have to have an electoral college. And someday soon, we wouldn't even have to have all these layers of representative government, not only in this country, but elsewhere. And if you wanted to lay a proposition before the House, everyone, mm -hmm. they could all vote. So, <clears throat> I mean, not that that's happening, it isn't really happening today, although you can certainly express yourself and be heard on social media, but the point is that Alex Burgo mm -hmm. okay, in LiveShift takes us closer mm -hmm. to that model. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really exciting. It's a real it. democracy. Yeah, I know, I know. Pure it democracy. Is. Pure democracy, that's, <laughs> that's right. right. And people come in the room and they see this and it's somehow it lights them up, and somehow it gets them to think that they may have a real effect here on this conversation. 
by the questions and by their answers. Mm -hmm. And so I think and this had... But it's also because it's anonymous. So, you know, it's yes. not like raising your hand. So I can say really what I feel. Yes. And, and I can just see it. You know, it's, oops, it moved the dial, you know. Yeah. So I think that, that both of that gets people much more engaged in the conversation and also yeah. think, thinking yeah. rather than just sort of sitting yeah. there. They come up with all kinds of things. And, uh, <clears throat> I mean, of course, they're going to be vetted. You're not going to say stinky things yeah. and have those questions asked in public. But, but I was surprised, just the raw questions that were coming, the question and answer portion, the level of civility was very high. I think there was sort of one rude question out of 120. That was mine. That was yours. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think the one I... Cause oh, I, I you're going to get me out of my car? Yes. Yeah, yeah, get me out of my car. That's the one. Yeah. I wrote that. I wanted to sort of shake the pot a little, so I wrote that, and then I, and I, I started looking at you and Carl Friedman right next to you to see when you get to that question. I said, whoa! And I, I, I saw you jump, and Alex jumped everybody because it was a pushy question. Yeah. The, the question was, are you kidding me? You're going to get me out of my car. I'm never getting out of my car. You just make me get out of my car. I'll make a stink if you make me get out of my car. Yeah, that was me. That was good. But it wasn't was really good. rude. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Well, I think, a lot, you know, we did a survey in well, 2006 when we were looking at energy efficient transportation. And, and a lot of people said, we're not, we're not going to ride the bus. No matter what you do, we're not going to ride the bus. And that was like 50% at and that time. And they have time, to answer that. You know? They have to tell us how they're going to get by that kind of a yeah. resistance. But speaking of resistance, we have to take a break. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. okay. Uh, we have Mike Hamnett, we have Sharon Moriwaki of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum co-chairs. Uh, this is Think Tech uh, Talks. We're talking, of course, on Wednesday about the state of clean energy here, and we're focusing on Energy Day uh, 2014. It's the three of us, but also in the, in the shadows somewhere is Henry Curtis, who's staying over from the last show, and he is, <laughs> he is in, a, in our special gallery, okay? We'll be right, what say, Henry? Okay, we're going to go to a break now. We'll be right back. We're back. We're live. We're here with Mike Hamnett and Sharon Moriwaki of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And we're talking about the state of clean energy and Energy Day 2014 took place on July 22nd at Lani Akea. And with us in our studio uh, audience, uh, we have Henry Curtis. And he actually has an answer he would like to present to the question of how are you going to get me out of my car? This is with respect to uh, Transport. transportation. You combine live SIFT and smart grids with smart cars where you get in the car and you drive to your destination and at the end your car explains how many red lights you went through, <laughs> how many stop signs you violated, how many times you sped and you get a ticket for each amount and it's automatically deducted through PayPal and when your bill is too high you get into public transportation. <laughs> That's great. You know, it's funny, but it's going to happen. It might, it might. The van yeah. cams are coming back, yeah. Henry. <laughs> With technology. Right on the dashboard. Yeah. Right. Uh, it'll be, you, and you'll only know when you get your PayPal bill. <laughs> okay, well, let's, let's go on more. So okay. aside from this great environment that the uh, Energy Policy Forum created for a really good discussion and good communication, um, what were the high points, you know, of the program? What were, the, what were the things, the aha moments, if you will, where people really found a sea change of some consequence? I think just kind of stepping back. Give the structure, back. yeah. Yeah, stepping back. What we're trying to do is, is, as a theme was, uh, is getting our act together. We hear we've been going down the road, and, and what really have we done? Uh, we've been talking about leadership. We've been talking about, oh, we've got to get more renewables. We've been doing well with our RPS and our energy efficiency. Um, uh, but, but what really, where are we, and, and really need to, to take stock and say, okay, have we or have we not done it, and where shall we be focusing? And so we tried to get the four groups together, the panels together, looking at that, our technology, uh, our, our renewables on the grid, uh, the regulatory reform, transportation, which is, has always been out there, and, and you know we have to look at some, some options other than kind of you know, kicking the road, taking the can down the Literally. road in transportation. Yeah. The gas can down you know? the road. <laughs> and, and finally, um, you know, how far are we in implementing clean energy? So, so the panels were so structured so that we would really hone in on those, those issues and what has been done and 
and most importantly, what action steps can be taken the next year? And this is an election year. This is a campaign year. So we, we really wanted to focus on these issues so that whoever was running could see we're serious about this. It's no more you know, just kind of saying we're doing well. We've got to say, what are we really doing, and where do we need to go? Yeah. So we started off with trying to bring in speakers who would paint that, that broad base for each of these areas, and then having the uh, panelists talk about what has been done or not been done, mostly what hasn't been done and what needs to be done. So that's how we started with renewables on the grid. So, so the first one was a, a panel on renewables and sort of what are the next steps with that. A second one was what, what needs to happen to the energy grid, uh, to basically to accommodate the, more the renewables. The regulatory, yeah. Uh, and then the and transportation was a biggie. Uh -huh. That was a you know, and we've been we had a whole pa a whole session or a conference on it last year, and you know where have we been? Not very far. And then finally, what does it do what to is implement? It? Right. Implement. Yeah, that was it. Was a progression. Yeah, yeah. And each was. one Last built on the previous one. So by the time you got to the end, you were, you really had a, a full, a full measure of issues to cover, and uh, that that really led to some hard advice uh, action points, as you say, Sharon. And the action points were the ones that uh, lives have showed up on the screen. It was really interesting to rate them. But did, did you mention? I didn't hear you mention the the uh, update part of it. Oh, yeah. The update. I found that very valuable. People really enjoyed that yeah. because it just showed. The gamut say of what things it was, had, what was it? So we had updates from, from the state, from the counties, uh, from the renewables association, from um, utilities, utilities and, and just where are we? They had a chance to tell us what did they do in the last year and what's on the plate this coming year. And uh, it was done in five minute, um, real, real uh, focused. And it worked. And, it they, worked. They and everybody marched stayed marched across yeah. the stage and did their thing. I was surprised they did. And it you was know? all terrific. I yeah. think it's just becoming sort of our, our process each year. <laughs> well, they're, I mean, they're getting it. <laughs> you threaten them if they go over time, and then he sits on them when they do. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way it works. It works. Ends. It started to work. It started to work. <laughs> it did work, actually, this year. <laughs> well, without naming names, there was one speaker last year who wouldn't stop, <laughs> so I sort of shuffled across the stage. Yeah. you remember that? Yeah, and I, I, I shuffled right up to him, grabbed him on the arm, and tried to pull him off. And he, he, then he understood why I was there, and, and the crowd I, thought I, that was pretty funny. And I reminded funny. him this year about it. <laughs> and he listened this year, and he finished on time this year. It was, no, he was, was earlier than, yeah, than Four time. seconds left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but I, but I yeah. thought that there were people who made some remarkable, remarkable uh, comments about what was happening. We, we are in uh, one... Senator uh, Mike Gabbard called it a crisis. That's serious. Nobody's actually said that before. Uh, and then there was all kinds of, there was a, Jim Lazar was the uh, keynote. Kino. And he pointed out there was a case involving the Market Street uh, buses that held for the proposition that if a utility can't make money, it should go away. Uh, you know, that was pretty, that was pretty edgy. I think one of the speakers says there's no vision and you know we really need to do something about it with our technology and with, with um, really getting people together. So now people are coming, the consumer is ah, finally coming into play in well, terms of how we actually deal with, with, with energy and yeah. electricity um, um, and, and not just the, the engineers saying okay this is you know how we're going to do it. Yeah. I think a couple things are pushing that. One is that just the cost of energy is just we really have consumer fatigue on the cost issue and you know we can r wave our arms about renewable energy but we're going to get pushed back uh, the second thing is i think the uh, heco and the other utilities are starting to realize with this kind of flight from the grid that seems to be taking place that they're going to have to change their business model or they're not going to survive and they're, they're sort of and that was a kind of an undercurrent to to what we people were saying and and i and Jim recognized that uh, as a keynote speaker in talking about the fact that we're going to have to change business models to make this whole thing work. Well, you look at the, the utilities as how, how uh, Hawaii energy utilities are owned, managed, and regulated need substantial improvement. That's 60% of the people there. I mean, it's just like shot up there that people know that something's wrong and it has to be done. Substantial improvement, not just tweak it. 
And so I think with that as the, the kind of the, the groundswell, um, even the utilities stayed till the end to listen to how can this be done. They were saying, oh, the first questions during our uh, preparation was, oh, let's just um, see how they want to be informed. But it was more than informing the customer. It was reducing the cost, increasing energy efficiency or renewable energy on the grid. So um, there, there really is um, a consumer um, much, much knowledge, more knowledgeable consumer base, plus also um, looking at the cost yeah. and saying there must be some way that you can't have this big, big utility working the way it has been working. We've got to change it. Yeah, and I think it's, it's basically a consumer rebellion on the whole, the whole issue of cost. It's very and a recognition of the rebellion. Yeah. You know, it's real. Uh, what, I, what I found is the environment that was created, you know, all the elements of that environment, was that A, people were not gonna get up there and drone on to quote, inform us. I mean, there's a little of that, but not much, not nearly as much as in other programs mm -hmm. of the years. Um, and B, uh, I think that the speakers were sort of acknowledging that, that people had a voice and they really felt, that, I mean, they seemed to fit, that they were, had to listen, they were obligated to listen to the voice. And so I think what happened by accident or by, by, mm -hmm. by intention is that there was an actual conversation taking place as mm -hmm. uh, that was unique. And I don't know how much the, I mean, the live sift couldn't have contributed to that entirely. I mean, that's, that's something element. that's been coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. Uh, but it, and, but it really and, showed. And from the Maui conference, when we were looking at the Maui conference and what it lacked was a consumer input. And it was expensive, right. it was neighbor island. Right. So part of that just surfaced that, that we really do need to address that and what, what is the impact on the consumer is become front and center now I mean, for the utilities. And uh, Jay Ignacio, who was there, is one of the other keynoters from, from uh, Big Island, um, acknowledged that and he, he actually you know, said, you know, I'm here to find out, you know? So, so at least there's an acknowledgement that we've got to change. Yeah, uh, he and um, Alan Arakawa, Mayor of Maui, oh, Mayor Maui, were our luncheon speakers, and I thought they were very good. It was a good idea to have them both. You know, sometimes you have one luncheon speaker, it's a little bit heavy. In this case, uh, it was grazing. And it was, yeah. but it was good because we've we've got the and which is which is what I like is is to bring in the neighbor island because theirs is a different perspective, and also they're small enough and they're close enough to what's happening that that they bring that perspective of the consumer base and what that means and they they're close to their their customers so they really do bring a whole other perspective than you know us here. Didn't you feel that the neighbor islands made a substantial contribution to this very conference, big, very oh, yeah. this panel very program? Big. I mean, they were telling us stuff we didn't know. They were telling us that they were doing things that we haven't done. We in Oahu, mm -hmm. uh, was, yes, so yeah. they they do a lot. And oh, they were council doing member, a lot. council member Yuki Mura about multi. -mobile. Former council member former, Yuki. Well, maybe <laughs> she, she didn't hey, win was the election. Seven, Sorry, eight, was regardless eight. how good her comments were. <laughs> was that number eight or number seven of the council? Anyway, she she brought you know this whole thing of multimodal transportation that they were doing. They have a plan. They just need to get some support and funding. So part of it is how do we support good things that are happening with, without you know, imposing other kinds of structures on them. Let's just fund good things that are happening in, in the counties. Yeah. The, the other thing is, is that I think the, um, the, the things that were suggested in, in terms of moving forward were, were much more nuanced than they've been in the past. I mean, in, in years past, people waved their arms saying we need to have more renewable energy. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you look at the priorities that uh, that people listed, both that came out of po of the the uh, panels, uh, you know the number one priority for the renewables was implement time time of use rates, right. Right. electricity That's more rates. More specific, yeah. That was very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and to focus conservation on high cost hours. I mean, people I think are getting much more of a sense as to how we really need to steer this boat and not just wave our arms and, and with Some generalizations. actual solutions. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That was very constructive was very stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And part of that was Jim. I mean, Jim sort of helped that along because he's so knowledgeable and he had specifics in his keynote. Right, and he was not holding back. No. <laughs> no. He was nobody not. was holding back. Well, well, mostly nobody was holding mostly back. Mostly no back. Okay, that's, uh, that's Mike Hamnett and uh, Sharon Moriwaki of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum.
And in the gallery, we have Henry Curtis. Henry, when we come back, I'd like to know how you think we're doing so far, if you don't mind me asking. This is Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, we're doing in Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Wednesday, because we always do. And this is a discussion of Energy Day 2014. We'll be right back after this short break. OK, we're back. We're live. This is Jay Fidel, Think Tech Talks in Hawaii, the state of clean energy, which actually best defines it right now, as far as I'm concerned. We are the state of clean energy. Yeah. How do you like that? This is all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Energy Day 2014 with Mike Hamnett and Sharon Moriwaki of Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, their co-chairs. And we have uh, Henry uh, Curtis in the room, and he's been listening, and I wanted to ask him how we're doing and what comments he may have so far uh, regarding this discussion. Henry? Aloha, Jay. I think the show is hitting some major and key points, and one of them is that there is a real change in the community, that the community is far more sophisticated and far broader and more involved than it's ever been before, and that has been one of the driving forces that is shaping policy. That is very we all good. agree with that. That's yeah, we good. sure do. And that, that harkens back yeah. to what you said at the last, the last show, too, the fact that it's really the community that's got to speak and move things along and, and not just a few people. Yeah, then everybody is part of it. We take ownership of it. You know, it's right. ours, and it's ours anyway, but better to act. Anyway, speaking of action, so we came out with action points. I think it would be helpful if you could read the action points okay. from the list that came from Live Sift. What were they, actually? Um, the top three from the first panel on, on renewables, as I mentioned before, one was uh, implementing time of use electricity rates. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's to, to really give benefit to people who, do who, who are going to conserve. A second is the focus conservation measures. On, and everybody agrees conservation is the best investment. But focus conservation measures on high cost hours, the peak hours when, uh, when demand's highest. Uh, the third one, which I thought was a, a interesting and, un and unexpected to me, was phasing down solar incentives. I mean, there really is a, a feeling that solar, uh, photovoltaics in particular, have kind of taken the, taken the state by storm. That's very and, interesting. And the uh, electric utilities are kind of struggling, and, and it's gone far beyond, solar penetration has gone far beyond what any of the utilities ever said was possible. In fact, some utilities on the mainland say it's impossible that we've got as much as we have on, on the systems. Uh, and yet, you know, they, they, um, they said that 79%, almost 80%, said we should increase measures to integrate PV. That's right. So, you know, on the one hand, maybe it's that we have, we don't need incentives. Or not as much, solar, anyway. Yeah, because we should solar is, it it, now, we should yeah, integrate yeah. it and, and make it more less expensive for people to get on the grid and, and actually stay on the grid because the alternatives to get off the grid and, and make your own energy off grid. Right? And, and, There's a fair amount of discussion on that and on storage too. And yes, storage. right. But I mean th those things are kind of in the offing and they've got everybody concerned about where, is it, where all this stuff is going. So I think in the first panel th those were, were kind of the high points. Uh, for the second panel is getting our utilities act together uh, there's a question Mike, about... Mike, you want to hold that up? That's the report that came from Live mm -hmm. Just hold it up at the camera. Let's see your camera over there, just so that people can see what it looks like. It's very nice. It's a color chart, and uh, if you attend one of these programs and sign up on, on Live Sift and give them your email, they'll send you the whole report of everything that passed through Live Sift during the program, which is really helpful. Mm -hmm. It's just part of a takeaway thing, which is good. And this is on our website, huh? It is on our website. Mm -hmm. So on the Energy Policy Forum website, the whole report is there, and you can see kind of what came out of the panel discussions, as well as uh, the, the voting on priorities that people in the audience did. You have more? Yeah. Action points? Oh, just one more on, on the, um, the utilities, uh, the high renewables on the grid, um, that, that again, it's a customer driving it. Uh, decreased customer costs was, was the biggest. Um, um, oh, well, what they thought in terms of smart grid, because we asked about smart grid as well, and they felt that smart grid would, would in fact, reduce customer costs. Again, it's always looking at customer savings and customer driven. Kind of and that's concern. a much more pervasive theme than it ever has been before, uh, even among the energy group. Yeah, so because it's th th these aren't, you know, people who are out there, consumers, mostly, some are, but a lot of them are, are stakeholders in the energy community. So 
this is across the board this coming is, This through. is going to be a great book someday. It is. About the tortuous adventure of Hawaii, you know, coming to energy sufficiency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really remarkable. And, and I think one of the reasons why the conversation has, has shifted and why the public is more involved, as Henry says, and we all agree, is because there hasn't been a single leadership organization aside from the Energy Policy mm -hmm. Forum, um, you know, that has led the way. So the, the, public, the public has seen the vacuum and is filling the vacuum, and, and it's a good result, however you get there. You know. uh, yeah, and I think the, the, we have the, um, the RPS, the Remote Portfolio Standards, and the Energy Efficiency Portfolio Standards, plus the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative, but that's in such a macro level and big targets that it hasn't really sifted down. So now the community is much more involved in the saying you know, we really should be doing this. And, and, and that, that, I think, has come about since 2008 when the Clean Energy Initiative was first discussed and adopted. That now, the, by bringing the community in, the so-called community will is now there to actually get something going. I mean, people are now, legislators did not really talk about it before. And now, clean energy is something that's on the table. And we are looking at the lack of leadership, and maybe we need to be doing something much more forceful in terms of putting the money there where our mouth is, you know. Well, and, and the second panel, the whole question of how, what the utility, the electric utilities are going to look like in Hawaii in the future was really front and center. Because, you know, we asked people how the utilities are owned, managed, and regulated. How, how is that system working? And, you know, 60% uh, of the people said it needs substantial improvement and change so that the status quo is no longer acceptable and people realize. And I had a sense from the people from Hawaiian Electric and from uh, KIUC that, that you know, they, they recognize that very well and they realize that, that they're going to have to change their business models in order to survive. Yeah, and I think the shift, the shift is that it's not only the consumers are much more knowledgeable in speaking out, it's the utilities are coming to you know, understand that, hey, yeah, they, they, they really have to deal with the public. Uh, and, and, and I think uh, whether it's what happened at PUC and the advisory council and so forth um, at the IRP, but, but they're, they're recognizing we've got to do something. And that's a major shift. Um, that, that really is, I think, important. It's, it's, it's now starting to, to get home, you know, to them yeah. and uh, when, when, trying to look for solutions. When we, uh, when we first started this whole thing, it was a, a much smaller circle of people and it was kind of inside baseball. So it was the people who had been involved, in, including Henry and others, that had been involved in contested case hearings mm. with the PUC. But, we did not have the broad involvement, and, and I think Henry's right in terms of the community is actually, actually recognizing that it's going to have to show the leadership because we're not getting it from any place else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think oh. it's a very positive thing. Okay, we got five minutes left, and I just want to paint the picture that I see and ask you guys the question that emerges, including Henry. <clears throat> so we did have an extraordinary program. It was an extraordinary program, and we came up with a lot of straight talking mm -hmm. and really important and analytical statements, thoughtful statements by a lot of people who are, you know, familiar. So this was the real deal. And then we have the, the benefit of the live SIFT results and the action points. It's to some extent it's documented, it's memorialized. Mm -hmm. It's on your website. Right. Anyone in listening here today could go and look at your website, hawaiienergypolicy.org. Am I get no. that right? Hawaiienergypolicy.org. Uh, Hawaii.edu. I was only testing you. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so here we are. We've had this program. We have this written down. We have the action points rated by, you know, an, an important slice of the community that came down, a larger than ordinary mm. slice of the community. And, and this is something that people always ask. So what now? So what's going to happen now? You guys, you know, you're talking about action points. So give me action. What's going to happen with the action points? How do we move this forward right now from today? How do we make it happen? How do we, you know, continue the lift of this program? What do we do? I, I think part of what has to happen from a practical standpoint for the forum is we, we've got to get the forum executive committee and then the whole forum together to say, okay, what are we going to do about this? 
what are we going to put to the legislature for the session? Things that, that the legislature can nudge along or do. Uh, what can we do in terms of getting more uh, public, public education awareness about where things are going and to, and to get more citizen engagement in, in what's going on? Um, and also to make people aware of the kinds of things that are pending before the Public Utilities Commission and, and decisions that, that are really, that, that they're talking about here, that are kind of waiting to be decided upon and to get the kind of input that's needed to, to get decisions made. Mm -hmm. I think that's... Yeah. Yeah. In terms of practical matters, um, the Energy Policy Forum uses what comes out of the Clean Energy Day, and that's why we focus on action points all the time. But this, this is the first time we've had something that's so documented that, that we could actually see what, what And that makes it of greater moment, easier that the to, fact that it's written say, down, it's right. public, it is this. public. Yeah. So we do look at initiatives and how we might go forward. And this, this is the big picture where people are, are looking at transportation. Well, we've got to do something about transportation, ground transportation, multimodal transportation. If, in fact, the counties are doing good things, how might we bring that up and, and have Get that support for the support counties to do that. To do yes, that and then yes. bring that on a statewide stage. Yes. So I think so that's... So much as possible now. Yeah, yes. That, and you compare that with the, uh, what is it, the IRP process. Right. <laughs> well, and the, 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 quite frankly, it puts pressure on us not just Sharon and me, but the forum as a whole, to say, to okay, engage. you've got this information, now, now we've got to do something, something about it. Do something about it right? <laughs> but that's the kind of pressure that's got to be on public yeah. officials, too. And, and if we could get, part of it is is that we do, the forum does meet um, in October to do some strategic planning around these So that's issues. the next step. So but the this next, is the agenda. But this is, this yeah. is, and this, this is focusing so um, where we're going to go. October is only a few weeks away. No, it is. That. I know. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Henry, your turn. Can you give us some feedback on this? Uh, what do you think? I think there's two important pieces of the puzzle that's going to be entered before the October forum meeting. First is Hawaiian Electric has to actually present their plan mm -hmm. on August 26th. So we get to see how mm -hmm. all the input has affected them. And then in September is the Asia Pacific Clean mm -hmm. Energy Summit, which is always of all the conferences, one of the major ones in Hawaii that really presents cutting edge issues. And so those will both help lay down the mm -hmm. foundation That's for the point. forum's next meeting. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's very good. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Henry. Think Tech is going to the uh, summit. We're going to bring cameras. Sharon and I are going to go as press. <laughs> and we are going to make an OC16 movie about what we find over there at the summit. So you'll be hearing more about that. Maybe we can get them on, get on the show, too. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you, Mike Hamnett. Thank you, Sharon Moriwaki, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. Thank you, Henry Curtis, Life Thank of the you, Land. Henry. This has been Wednesday, Hawaii State of Clean Energy discussing Energy Day 2014. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you, Jay. Aloha. Thanks, Jay. Aloha. Thank you, Henry. Uh, thank you, Henry. Aloha. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> My name is DJ. I'm growing up with ThinkTech.